Hello mathematicians, puzzlers, and other curious people. In this video, we're investigating the handshake function, and what that is, is a function for solving problems like this. Anna, Betty, Charlie, Dave, and Emma, as part of getting acquainted, shake hands in all possible pairs. How many handshakes take place? So I think we're going to need to jot a few notes down for this. Anna, Betty, Charlie, Dave, and Emma, who are getting acquainted. Now, if you haven't already, try this out and see what you can find out. So one thing people often try is they say, well, that's five people. So there would be five times five or 25 handshakes. So that's not a bad idea for a start, but let me point something out about this. Anna doesn't need to shake hands with Anna, nor Betty with Betty, etc. So the five on the diagonal would not actually happen. Furthermore, there are some redundancies in this. So if Betty shakes hands with Anna, Anna doesn't separately shake hands with Betty. So really, we need to modify our strategy a bit. We need to subtract off the diagonal. So really, we kind of go from 5 times 5 to 5 times 4. And then, since that's really including each handshake twice, we need to divide that result by 2. So this right here is one way you can figure out handshake problems. You can say that the number of handshakes for a certain number of people is the number of people times one less than the number of people, and then divided by two. And this is a formula you can use to deal with the handshake function. Now, there are other methods for dealing with problems like this. Somebody else might say, okay, well, let's sketch this out. So if one person is getting acquainted, well, that's nobody shaking hands. Two people would be one handshake. Three people, one, two, three, would be three handshakes. What about four people? But you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six handshakes. And then five people would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten handshakes. Which you might notice is the exact same thing we would get by saying, okay, five times four is twenty, divided by two is ten. So these methods agree, and that's good. So one thing people often want to know is which way they should do these problems. There's not one right way. All these methods work. So just pick one you like, but also know about the others, because depending on the problem you're doing, like how many people are in it, you might want a different strategy sometimes. So like I said, try them all out, see what you like, and see when the different ones are useful. And other than that, calculator.